This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV for Thursday, January 19th, 2024. I'm Derek Gilbert. Quick reminder, please, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and click the bell for notifications. But then bear in mind, there's always a risk we can be canceled, but we can tell you how to prevent that. Never be cut off from us again. I'll tell you after the break. Topic number five today, Iran and Pakistan. Pakistan has condemned an Iranian airstrike inside Pakistani borders that left two children dead, calling it an unprovoked violation of its airspace and warning of retaliation. Iran said it used precision missile and drone strikes to destroy two strongholds of a group Sunni militants calling themselves Jaish al-Adl. Uh, this is in the southwestern part of Pakistan's Balochistan province. You see uh, it outlined there in uh, pink on the map there. Uh, this is according to Iran's state aligned Tasneem news agency. Now, this attack on Tuesday comes after Iran launched missiles into northern Iraq and Syria Monday into Kurdish regions uh, near the town of Erbil in uh, Iraq. Missiles landing fairly close to the uh, United States consulate there. This is an escalation of hostilities between Iran and uh, other organizations that uh, are, are ramping up hostilities in the region while the Iran or the Israel-Hamas war continues. Now, Iran, again, a Shia nation targeting Sunni militants who uh, have been uh, kind of waging a low-grade conflict with Iran for quite a while. Pakistan's foreign ministry said the attack on its territory killed two innocent children, uh, warning Iran of serious consequences. Um, Pakistan on Wednesday recalled its ambassador from Tehran, suspended all high-level contact with Iran, Last month, Iran accused these Jaish al-Adl militants of storming a police station in the Iranian province of, provinces of Sistan and Baluchistan, which resulted in the deaths of Iranian, or 11 Iranian police officers. This, uh, uh, by the way, the name of this organization in Arabic translates into English as Army of Justice. It's a separatist militant group that operates on both sides of the border between Pakistan and Iran and wants to uh, break away Iran's Sistan and Baluchistan provinces as an independent state. Topic number four, Germany and Russia. While Ukraine is now willing to sit down and talk peace with Russia, it's, I think, been made clear to President Zelensky behind the scenes that um, there is no path to victory at this point. NATO, the United States, not willing to do everything necessary to uh, make that happen, which would basically involve all-out war between NATO and Russia. Uh, on Sunday, however, the German newspaper built, published what it called a month-by-month -month outline of a possible path to conflict with Russia in the summer of 2025, showing that Moscow could launch an open attack on Western Europe next summer. Moscow is calling the claims a hoax, fake news. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov telling journalists Monday that he refused to comment on the report. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman uh, Maria Zakharova said uh, this was last year's Zodiac forecast, basically just dismissing the report in uh, the corporate media in Germany as fake news. Now, when approached by Bildt, a German defense official said that considering different scenarios, even if they are extremely unlikely, is part of everyday military business, particularly in training. Okay, even if this is just a thought exercise for training purposes, seems like putting it out in the corporate media is kind of a bad idea, ratcheting up tensions at a time when there's already shooting going on in Eastern Europe. The good news is that Russia doesn't seem to be taking the bait, which is a good thing. I mean, because you gotta wonder, after funneling all available reserves of ammunition and military hardware into a lost cause in Ukraine over the last two years, what exactly does Germany, NATO, the United States think it's gonna shoot at the Russians if war does break out? Topic number three, COVID X. Talked about disease X earlier this week. Now we learn that Chinese scientists are actually experimenting with a mutant strain of SARS-CoV-2, the virus behind COVID-19, that is 100% lethal to humanized mice. This uh, strain is called GXP2V. It attacked the brains of mice that were engineered to reflect the genetic makeup of people, transgenic mice. This is according to a study that was shared last week out of Beijing. This is a mutant version of GX2017, a cousin to SARS-CoV-2. It was reportedly discovered in pangolins in Malaysia in 2017, three years before the pandemic broke out. 
All the mice that were infected with this new strain of the virus died within eight days, which the researchers noted was a surprisingly rapid death rate. Oh, goody. GXP2V infected the lungs, bones, eyes, tracheas, and brains of the dead mice, the last of which was severe enough to cause the mice to die. In the days before their death, they quickly lost weight, exhibited a hunched-over posture, and moved very slowly. Most creepy, their eyes turned white before they died. Now, this study is the first of its kind to report a 100% mortality rate in mice infected by this cousin to SARS-CoV-2. Again, this is not a strain that is circulating in the wild yet. The study did not, did not indicate how it might actually affect humans. Even though the mice are humanized, they are not human. The question is why this research is being done at all. A question asked by Francois Ballou, who's a an epidemiology expert at University College London's Genetics Institute. He called the research terrible and scientifically totally pointless. Quote, I can see nothing of vague interest that could be learned from force infecting a weird breed of humanized mice with a random virus. Conversely, I could see how much stuff might go wrong. End quote. Given the most probable cause of the COVID-19 outbreak, That's a really good point. Let's pray they're using a higher level of biosecurity than they used at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Topic number two, the Supreme Court, a a case that is uh, going before the uh, court, which seems on its face to be kind of boring, might actually have some pretty, pretty serious implications. This could be one of the most important cases heard by the Supreme Court since the overturn of Roe v. Wade last year. A group of commercial fishermen are objecting to a rule by the National Marine Fisheries Service that forces them to pay for one of the NMFS's employees to be on their vessels every time they go out to enforce regulations. They gotta pay like 750 bucks a day to have this guy on their boat to look over their shoulders. But this required fee is only supposed to be imposed in three very narrow circumstances and none of those circumstances apply to the fishermen. But the uh, NMFS is saying, no, no, you gotta pay or you're not fishing today. Well, this uh, suit may have far-reaching implications. It challenges the so-called Chevron deference that allows regulators to expand their power and impose enormous regulatory burdens on Americans. The theory behind the Chevron deference is that Congress is so busy they don't have time or the resources to enforce their laws, which are often vaguely worded, leaving it up to the regulators working in the executive branch to decide how to interpret and enforce them, legislating through regulation. Chevron arose when judges were substituting their policy preferences for those of the elected branch, Congress, but the doctrine has no constitutional basis and it defies the Administrative Procedure Act, which requires that the reviewing court shall decide all relevant questions of law, interpret constitutional and statutory provisions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Bottom line is this. The Supreme Court typically doesn't like to get too far out ahead of the time, so it's not likely to rein in the uh, runaway uh, regulatory bureaucracy that has grown up here in recent years, reining in the power of the executive branch. They're not likely to do that. They'll probably rule narrowly here in favor of the fishermen. They've got a good case. Uh, But it's not likely to put an end to the burdensome regulations imposed by the uh, federal government, although it could happen which is why we bring it to your attention and we will keep our eyes on that. Coming up, uh, be glad you're not a fan of the Buffalo Bills. I will explain why next on 5 and 10. Jonathan Kahn is back with his most explosive book ever, The Josiah Manifesto. This stunning book exposes whether or not a 3,000-year-old calendar of appointed days provides the secret to the most dynamic year of our lives. Even ordaining a plague, a national lockdown, days of fire, and the changing of the Supreme Court. Secret information regarding an anonymous prayer and a mysterious template that may lie behind the event that overtook Capitol Hill and shook the nation. 
and the mysterious ancient king that may have revealed the secret behind a modern American president and so much more. Also included in this must-have collection, The Gods of the Bible Unveiled on DVD, where Derek Gilbert systematically breaks down how to understand what the gods in the Bible are and what their place in Christianity actually is. In this instructional guide, you'll be taken step by step through why God calls his sons gods in the Psalms, how the fall in Genesis was only one of three divine rebellions, and how the Greek gods and titans found their origin in our Bibles. But that's not all. In this amazing offer, you'll also receive the Jonathan Kahn Collection, featuring three uncut, extended, and too hot for TV episodes on the return of the gods that will leave you speechless. This DVD also includes three additional episodes of Jonathan's best interviews with the Skywatch TV investigative team. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of over $75. Yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. But right now, you can upgrade your master collection to include the absolutely astonishing Josiah Manifesto Uncensored 8 DVD album featuring hours of additional totally uncensored raw materials and mysteries that are not included in the book or anywhere else but right here, including the Island of Mystery, the Winds of Hinnom, Jehu and the Temple of Baal, the Jubilee and Redemption and the Child of the Nile, and the Manifesto Part 1 and 2 and the very last mystery. This special upgrade includes all of the items from the Josiah Manifesto Master Collection and the exclusive uncensored 8 DVD album, which all together holds a retail value of $200. Yours now for your donation of only $74.99 plus shipping and handling. So be prepared to understand the end times like never before as you dive into the Josiah Manifesto Master Collection or the Master Collection with upgrade uncensored 8 DVD album. So order now at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the Josiah Manifesto Master Collection. Item number one today, we know that hardcore football fans can be a little bit insane. I, I went through that phase earlier in life. After the Bears won the Super Bowl in 86, like, okay, I've lived long enough now to see this. I can move on. Anyway, Buffalo Bills fans reportedly started a new tradition about six weeks ago after a uh, fan reportedly fell into a pit. This was, coincided with a victory that started the uh, winning streak that led the Bills into the playoffs as the number two seed. See, the Bills are building a new stadium in Orchard Park, New York, right now just a big hole in the ground, and reportedly a fan fell into the hole uh, after, you know, prior to the first game of this winning streak. And since then, according to an ER doctor in New York, they've allegedly seen a patient that has thrown him or herself into the pit every week since then, even for away games, and the Bills have continued to win. Now, the question is whether this story is really true, because according to the source that reported the story, the name of the ER doctor given in the, uh, the report is Jerome Silberman could be real, but Jerome Silberman is also the name of the late actor Gene Wilder, whom you might remember from Blazing Saddles, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and other comic roles. So it's possible somebody's just trolling Bills fans out there. Either way, and I know I shouldn't have to say this, but I will, please do not throw yourself, human sacrifice fashion, into a big pit in the ground even if you think it might help your favorite team win. Just some helpful advice from your friends at Skywatch TV. Where this week we are talking with Jonathan Kahn about his latest book, The Josiah Manifesto. Just some startling parallels from the Old Testament and the present day. In fact, does the life of King Josiah, did the life of the rebel Jehu, who basically took the kingdom away from the descendants of Ahab and Jezebel, the northern kingdom of Israel, uh, show a template for how we survive the turbulent times in which we live today. Jonathan explains. You can watch the program right now at our website, skywatchtv.com. It's also available at our Apple TV and Roku channels. You can watch it at the YouTube channel for the main program, the new channel there, youtube.com slash at skywatchtvnow. 
It's at rumble, rumble.com slash skywatch TV. All of our video content is there. But best of all, guarantee we never get canceled by getting our free app. This app available for Roku, Apple TV, and your mobile device bypasses the gatekeepers of big tech who have a habit of looking back sometimes as far as three, four years, trying to find things to justify canceling us. It's happened already. Happened my personal channel too. Um, but uh, won't happen on our app. It's our app. And you can use Apple's AirPlay or Google's Chromecast to send it from your phone or tablet to your big screen. But again, if you get the Roku app, well, then it's already there. Bottom line is, this guarantees we won't get canceled. The app also features important news updates of several times a week, um, calendar of upcoming events, and other important features. It's available for iOS, Android, and Amazon Kindle Fire phones and tablets. It is free. We've got links to their app stores posted at our website, skywatchtv.com. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert. This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV.